You're listening to the Huddle Up Podcast with Chad Jensen and Zach Kelberman. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com and sound off. And now it's time to drop some knowledge. Okay, we are live, but we got to let it breathe just a moment here. Apologies for our tardiness this evening. We've got an explanation. Don't worry. We've just got to wrap in the Facebook community and we will get this party started. Fresh rumors, a surprise, a semi-surprise release. Well, waving. We'll get to all that. But welcome in, everybody, to the Huddle Up podcast presented, as always, by Mile High Huddle. I'm your host, Chad Jensen. And with me is my fellow football priest, my partner in this podcasting endeavor. He is the deputy editor of MileHighHuddle.com, Zach Kelberman. Zach, the first thing I want to touch on, I want to get to the quarterback that signed with the Packers, oddly enough. I want to get to the latest on the Aaron Rodgers trail. First things first, though, Deshaun Hamilton, no longer a Bronco. We kind of sensed this coming, but what was your gut reaction? Uh, thanks, Deshaun, for whatever you did over the course of the last three three plus seasons or so in Denver. He never really established himself as a go-to wide receiver. He had a great opportunity, but kind of dropped it figuratively and literally. I, th- I was happy about his draft selection. I was happy about his integration in the offense opposite Cortland Sutton, but he never fully blossomed. And I think the writing was on the wall beginning last year when the Broncos invested not just one premium pick in a receiver, but two. So happy trails to Deshaun, and I hope he does well in his second destination. Yeah, I mean, the Broncos have been telegraphing this for some time. And then there was the report, I want to say about two months ago, I want to say it was February sometime that the Broncos had been receiving trade calls on the subject of Deshaun Hamilton, which came as some surprise, Zach, because you and I, when these topics would come up via super chat or whatever, we'd be like, you know what? Does Deshaun Hamilton have any value? They almost traded him, but it ended up falling through. So they just waived him. I'm guessing he's going to get claimed. I've had guys on the Colts beat reach out to me saying, man, We hope we are able to claim Deshaun Hamilton. I know there's some other teams that are intrigued about Deshaun, so he'll soon have another NFL home. And let me tell you why that's the case is because he wasn't cut for lack of ability. He wasn't cut because he's injury prone. He was cut because it was a numbers game because the Broncos have one of the deepest receiver rooms in the NFL and they couldn't afford to carry Deshaun Hamilton on the 53-man roster. So I do think he will get claimed uh, off waivers. Probably tomorrow we'll know his next team. And for his sake, I hope he goes to a better offense that will utilize him to whatever his abilities are in the NFL. It's kind of a bummer because he – arrived in Denver as Penn State's all-time leading receiver. You know, the optimistic 2018 draft class had Cortland Sutton in round two, Deshaun in round four, and both of them ended up starting games because when they were drafted, we were like, oop, doesn't spell good things maybe long-term for the aging Demarius and the aging Emmanuel Sanders, but no one really saw them, Zach, getting the playing time that they did as rookies. Both started games, but for Deshaun, it was down the stretch, and you know what? I think that was probably his best sample size as a Bronco from there. As Cortland Sutton began to rise and outshine Emmanuel Sanders, then Sanders gets hurt. Deshaun, whenever the lights were on, whenever the chips were down, he dropped that one touchdown in Joe Flacco's debut as a Bronco. He just kind of seemed to, for lack of a better term, wilt. Meanwhile, the Broncos were like, dang it, man. We got really old at wide receiver, so we drafted a couple, and then he, one of them's not really paying dividends. So we're going back to the well. Not only did we draft one, not two, but three wide receivers in 2020. And then, of course, Seth Williams again this just two weeks ago, plus the rise of Timmy P in the absence of Cortland Sutton last year. So, look, his talents, Deshaun Hamilton, Zach, it's sad to see any original round Denver Broncos draft pick be uh, parted ways with, so to speak. But he's better off going somewhere else because there are teams out there that could use his style of, of wide receiver. I hate to just step aside from your analysis, which I think is spot on, but we have some breaking news, chat that just came through the old Twitter sphere. Uh, Mike Kliss is reporting the Broncos are signing Cameron Fleming, the offensive tackle, and Tom Pellicero reports it's a one-year deal for $3.67 million. And according to Kliss, it's going to be Fleming versus Massey for the right to start. And real quick, Gut instant analysis. You don't want Cam Fleming to start. I watched him in Dallas. He is like Donald Stevenson. He's an okay swing guy. You don't want him in the starting lineup. So we have to hope right off the cuff, Bobby Massey wins this job. 
We learned earlier this week, of course, that Fleming would be joining that. I mean, it was a who's who. I mean, almost a baker's dozen of free agent tackles basically working out for the Broncos. We had our hearts set on Dennis Kelly with Bobby Massey as kind of the runner up. But yeah, Fleming was among them. I'm looking here at the report we had from back then. This guy, 28 years old, Zach, you you know a lot about Fleming as you've covered him. But for those who aren't sure, too sure about Fleming, he's a 28-year-old tackle uh, drafted in the fourth round by New England back in 2014, a big brain Stanford guy, helped the Patriots win two world championships, blocking for Tom Brady as a, as a right tackle. But then from there, when his, his rookie deal expired, the Patriots let him walk, and then he, he bounced around to Dallas. I want to say, yeah, New York Giants. Last year, Zach, he started all 16 games but finished with a 58.4 pro football focus grade. Now, we're not one to go too far down the rabbit hole on PFF grades. They can be extremely subjective. But nevertheless, that's a very subpar grade. It is, and he's a subpar tackle. And the only reason he started last year was because he followed Jason Garrett from Dallas to New York. He's a swing tackle, a reserve tackle. That's his upside. So the Broncos, like I said, they better hope that Massey wins this competition. But I'm wondering, they hosted four or five tackles on tryouts. They've signed three of them now with Ryan Pope. What is the issue with Dennis Kelly? Is it money? Is there something we don't know? That was my top choice. And I didn't think the Broncos, Chad, were going to get two of these top tackles. We said it yesterday. I I was dead wrong on this. I thought they would be okay with Bobby Massey and Ryan Pope. Uh, They have Calvin Anderson, Quinn Bailey, Drew Himmelman. I just wonder what the holdup was and what the disconnect was from signing Dennis Kelly, who I believe was the superior option. More often than not, it's money, right? It's like the, the, the saying that nothing rings the bell like money. When there's a dispute in the league more, or something doesn't go the way you want it to go, more often than not, if you boil it down, it comes down to money. Now, Dennis Kelly, it could be, Zach, this is just me speculating, but it could be that Dennis Kelly didn't really see you know, consistent, meaningful starter snaps. I mean, he had a few exposures with the Titans until last year. Maybe they were wanting someone with more starting experience, but look, for whatever Cameron Fleming might lack, for whatever you know Bobby Massey's detractors might say about him, they have a lot of starting experience in big games in the league. And we got a super here from Dennis. Thanks, buddy. He says, "Do we know why we didn't sign Kelly? It, all we know, all we can, it's either money or maybe he just didn't jive with with Mike Munchak." Right. But Zach, I'm loving. I am loving how George Payton is attacking this thing. No more trying to like you know. Let's hope pin all our hopes on one guy and hope it works out. Those days, rear view. Yeah, we found out what Juwan James is worth, and that's Ryan Pope, Bobby Massey, and Cameron Fleming. So, you know, <laughs> three, three for one. We have to hope, though, that these tackles stay healthy. Otherwise, the Broncos are in the same position. And this doesn't distract from the fact that I believe Peyton made a mistake, a rare mistake, you know, not taking a true tackle in the draft and building him up. Hopefully, next offseason, he learns his his lesson there. But I like the depth. The Broncos are okay now on both sides. They have Calvin that can slide to left tackle where I think he belongs behind Garrett Bowles. And like I said, though, Bobby Massey, he's a good holdover guy. Cameron Fleming, not so much. So we have to hope the former gets this job and holds on to it. Yeah, it's the type of situation where when the dust settles, you want it to be Bobby Massey. And Fleming is kind of your emergency guy, right? He's the guy you plug in if Massey gets banged up or something because – yeah, I mean, he was okay, uh, Fleming, blocking for a future Hall of Fame and arguably the greatest of all time quarterback in Tom Brady, who was getting the ball out on that as soon as his back foot hit, boom, ball out. He was good doing that, but when you put him in a situation where it's you know not stellar quarterback play or even just young quarterbacks who, look, they do need a little bit more processing time to read the field after they complete their drop back and – Things aren't perfectly manicured and on time and on schedule. That's where Fleming starts getting in a lot, a lot of trouble. Whereas if you look at Massey, you know, he's got some experience blocking for quarterbacks where you're not quite sure where they're going to be. Is the ball coming out on time? So that's that's the upside. Yeah, and also Massey has uh, experience blocking through Trubisky. And, and say what you want about Trubisky, but there's some similarities with him and Drew Locke. You know, they both can use their legs. They're both kinds of prone to being erratic. They move out of the pocket. They can make plays on the run across their bodies on the opposite side of the field. So I, I like Massey as the replacement. I'm okay with that signing. I just think that we have to hope he stays healthy. It's no guarantee either coming off two years in a row now 
or he was impacted by injuries, including last year where he missed half the season with a knee. Lots more to get to. We got to say hello and thank you to one of our great Mount Rushmore superstars, Muhammad Badri, the resident MHH male model. Appreciate that super sticker. It's going good on our end, my friend. Couldn't be better. And uh, hope everything's going better on your end. Hope things are well for you and your family. But, man, Muhammad, we love you. We appreciate you. You are in our Hall of Fame faux show. Yeah, Muhammad, good to see you around these parts once again. We appreciate your support. Uh, we hope everything's doing well with you, and uh, it's good to see you around here. But, Chad, uh, I'm hearing a little bit of glitching. I don't know, John. Is it just me? What are you hearing, John? Show me. Uh, okay. It, well, a little, a little bit before, yeah. My computer did an update right before I jumped in the room. So if I need to, you let me know if it persists. And if I need to, I'll yeah. hop out and do a restart, and then we should be good. Um, all right. Well, guys, lots more to get to. We got to unravel the latest on the whole Aaron Rodgers sweepstakes, trade rumors, former teammates, buzz, this, that, and the other. We're going to get to all that. Plus, it's that time of the week where we take a peek inside the Mile High Mailbag because we are your football priests each and every week. Heck, each and every day, we're here to offer you the absolution and answers to your burning Broncos questions. So we're going to try to be as democratic as possible in getting to all the different channels that we stream to. But, of course, our Super Chat superstars, they do have to take priority for us in our hearts, in our minds. That's the way it goes. But we're going to try and keep it as balanced as we possibly can. Before we get to all that, hey, matters of business, make sure you're following on Twitter at Huddle Up Pod. And then also on Facebook, go to Facebook slash Facebook.com slash Mile High Huddle Pod. The easiest thing to do, look, everybody uses Twitter. Everybody uses Facebook on their phone. It's an app. So just open up Facebook, search Huddle Up Podcast. Hard to miss. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Appreciate you guys doing that. And then on Twitter, you also want to make sure you're following our main account. Frankly, gang, we need way more of you to make sure you're following the Mile High Huddle Twitter account, all right? Because on YouTube, over 10,000 subs. On Facebook, we're approaching 100,000 followers. Twitter account, pretty small, relatively speaking, to, to that reach and that community that we have. So make sure you're following that because that's where the breaking Broncos news and analysis goes first, right there, all right? Also, make sure you are following our producer, Buona Beast, on Twitter, at John K, MHH. My partner, Zach Kelberman, at Kelberman NFL, and myself, at Chad and Jensen on Twitter. We love keeping the conversation going there. And then also, guys, consider becoming a supporter for of Mile High Huddle on Facebook. Trying to see, hey, we get questions and DMs and emails all the time, Zach. Hey, man, is there anything we can do aside from Super Chat to support Mile High Huddle? For now, yes, that is become a super supporter on Facebook. Navigate to our page there. You'll see the big blue button. Click that. You're in like Flynn, and that gives you access to Kelberman's Corner, which is every Sunday at noon. A little bit different flavor than these live, uh, long-form podcasts. Hot takes that hold water, all right? Plus, Saturday, you get the trickle zone, deep dive stuff, quality, quality, VIP premium content. And right now, if you're on Facebook, scroll down to the bottom where you would put in your chat, your comment. You'll see a little green icon. Click that. Same way of signing up and becoming a supporter. And then check out the merch store, guys, huddleuppod.com. Get your swag on, get a football priest t-shirt, get a hat, get a hoodie, a you know, beanie, a little something for everybody, a mug. It's another way to support what we're doing here. And if you're not in a position to do those things, hey, we're seriously tickled to have you with us. Make sure you're subscribed, however you enjoy the podcast. If you're on YouTube or Facebook, if you want to help get this content, this community in front of other Broncos fans, like the video. All right. Doesn't just help us, helps those out there wandering the desert in Broncos country ignorant and unaware that this community is out here waiting to embrace them. So like the video on YouTube and Facebook. And then if we're doing a good job for you, or at the very least, if you respect the effort, share this video, help us continue to grow and reach those new like-minded Broncos fans just like you. All right, Zach, what's the latest thing? You got something on your mind. Go. I see Casey Nickel showering us with (laughs) – that's – I I don't know. Casey, I feel so – Speechless, so at a loss right now. I would take my hat off, but I, I'm paralyzed right now with with gratitude and with uh, appreciation and surprise, Chad. Dude, wow, that's that's some that's some flex, that's some clout right there, Casey. We love you, dude. You have just been on fire of late here at uh, Mile High Huddle, and especially for the Huddle Up podcast. 
We have a little small thank you coming your way. You should be seeing that any day now. If not tomorrow, I'm sure it'll be, well, I, you know, things deliver on Saturday. So if not tomorrow, maybe Saturday, Monday, I'm thinking at the very latest. But man, blows our mind, dude. Seriously, some it's like a slobber knocker, or slow motion movies. Seriously, so thank you, Casey. He says, I want to drop a little gift to you guys. Y'all are something I look forward to every day. Keep up the great work. Never stop these great podcasts. Also, with the latest updates on the pandemic, what game is the MHH sure. meetup? Can't wait to see Locke shred if we don't get Aaron Rodgers. Wow. Still, man, Casey, I'm that's uh let's see, that's a top four all time biggest individual super chat at MHH. There's two great superstars, Dale Brian and Dale DW96734 and Brian Greenfield. And then it's you, Casey, dude. So that's some that's some serious clout. That's going to be a legendary super chat that guys like me, Zach, John, that we talk about when we're amongst ourselves, just like marveling. But real quick, let me check and see. Okay, I have my sculpting equipment, so he'll be on the Mount Rushmore of super chat superstars. Casey, I, there's no words to describe your generosity and our gratitude for you. Thank you so much, and we are so appreciative that you watch us every night. And the meetup, Chad, we've had discussions about this. We want to make it happen, and we want to make it happen in the first three, four weeks of the season five weeks of the season, when the weather's still nice, we're tentatively, tentatively, nothing set in stone yet, tentatively uh, circling the Jets game, week three. I think that would be a nice game for the Broncos, Chad. I think it would be a, oh, yeah. I think an easier opponent than uh, another one on their schedule early in the year, and I think that's the one tentatively right now. Anyone interested, that's going to be the meetup spot that date. Yes, indeed, and it's still in September where we can be relatively confident. I mean, look, the Rockies are known for – you know, you got the risk of getting all four seasons in one day. Like that's how crazy the weather can sometimes be in the Rockies. But those of us who dwell in the Rockies know that for the most part, September is pretty bankable. Like you can, you can kind of forecast and go, look, it's probably at worst, it might be a little chilly, but you put on a jacket, you're good to go. Once you get into October, things can suddenly get cold and snowy and icy really, really fast. And then November, forget about it. That's what it's happening that way. So we're looking at, yeah, probably the probably the Jets game. It's either the Jets or the Ravens, but we're looking at the Jets game week three. So once we hone in on that and make a final decision, uh, we're going to put all the plans in place. We're going to do a fun meet and greet host. We'll do a live podcast. Those of you that are hanging out with us there, it'll be a lot of fun. The possibilities are endless. I mean, a lot of the things, Zach, that you and I were planning on doing last year for the draft in Vegas, right, before it got canceled because of the pandemic – a lot of those things we were hoping to do there, we're going to be able to do at this meet and greet. And then some. I mean, being at the stadium, being in season at a game, I mean, I'm so looking forward to all the ideas and all the interaction we could have. And, you know, full disclosure, nothing. We This is still very much in the infantile process. We're first getting this going right now. We will have updates as we go along here. Uh, but Casey and everybody else that's interested, we are very much looking forward to this and very much planning this out. Love you, Casey. Stay yes. tuned on that front, my friend. And thank you again. When that time comes, be sure to book your ticket, get there, be square. We'll, we'll want to meet up with you. And no, Jay Roper, I will not be dressed up in green. Anyone, I, I, there's no, I don't have an ulterior motive for it being the Jets game. I just think it'll be an easier game for the Broncos to win. And I think it'll be a good game early on in the season. The generosity is wow, just phenomenal. <laughs> There goes my hat. It's off. Kiaka. Kiaka in the house, dude. Wow. Wow. Aloha, he says. Hashtag Broncos. Hooey. Zach, Chad, and Beast just want to show some love. So after MMA training, I went to Ala Moana Mall in Hawaii and saw a guy rocking a let him hate T. Hashtag state of being. Hashtag Broncos country. Love y'all. <laughs> dude, that might have been Dale. You should have said, hey, dude, are you Dale? Might have been DW96734, but... Seriously, Kayaka, thank you, my friend. And if it's possible for you to uh, hop on an airplane and traverse the skies over the Pacific and get to Denver on that date once we announce here very soon, we'll announce it within the next week or so. It'd be great to, to meet you in person and shake your hand. Yeah, apparently it's a small island out there in Hawaii. A lot of Broncos fans are, you know, <laughs> me, I never knew it was such a big Broncos, you know, hotspot, but we've had multiple listeners and viewers reach out from Hawaii. But Kiaka, thank you so, so, so much. Uh, again, it's so appreciated. Nothing we can say would ever do it justice, but I want you to know, we want you to know that we're so grateful for all your support. 
And by the way, if you ever want a guest on the show, we'd love to have you. I mean, it's for this. It's called a superstar segment for a reason. So just reach out on Twitter. We can arrange that. It would be a guest. We'd love to meet you. Uh, a little uh, precursor, perhaps, to meeting you in the flesh in Denver. Goodness Good gracious. Morning. Mark Langley in the house with a very generous super. It's like it's our birthday or something, Zach. But you know what? It's actually not too far off from our birthday in terms of when you and I started doing the podcast together in 2018. It's a little past. It's a little beyond that mark because we started doing it. Literally, it was the week of the draft 2018 when Zach and I started teaming up. Uh, But it's close enough. Seriously, guys, Mark. Dude, love you, bro. You know how much you mean to us. Hope everything's going better on your end. What the heck? Mark's is going, going on, ham dude? right now. Um, Mark's making it rain. You know, he's just he's throwing up the money right now. <laughs> he's so Wow. Hope, hope hope everything's going on. Mark reached out to me. This is especially. I'm not going to betray anything you don't want known, Mark. But Mark reached out to me privately to let me know he's juggling some. Stressors. Let's just put it that way. Mark. Um, on his end, he's like, guys, I, you might not be seeing me for a few days. I don't know this and that. And I'm like, hey, dude, take care of your business. Handle what you need to handle. Be there for those who you need to be there for. The show goes on. We'll see you when we see you. You'll be in our hearts and our, our, our thoughts. And we'll pray and pray for you and all that stuff. It's all good. And then here he is throwing down like a boss. Like, what is it, John? Three? Golly. Mark, dude. Love you, bro. <laughs> what do you even say to that? I mean, we've we've literally shown our appreciation to Mark, and he knows what we've done for him, and he knows our gen- you know, our show of support. But again, nothing can really do it justice, Mark. Thank you so so much. Wow, you Mark's are one of the few uh, superstars in the community that actually has my cell phone number, and um, mine's earned that. Now. He's earned that trust. Our cell phone numbers. He's earned that trust, and you guys can see why. So, Mark, dude, seriously, love you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate you. And I had breaking news again, Chad. I don't know if it's true or not. I saw it in the comments. Did Chad Kelly sign with the Packers? Did that really happen, or am I being trolled? Wouldn't surprise me. I know he was he was uh, brought in for an audition for John. Rookie I'm camp. I'm seeing four from Mark. Four top rope super chats from Mark. Goodness gracious, wow. Mark, dude. I'm gonna text you right now. I'll text you when when I'm not on the mic. But seriously, bro, <laughs> love you. Hope things are, you, are better in your neck of the woods, man. Anything, yeah. uh, any any specific topic you want us to get to, by all means, bro. Phone's always open, Mark. Appreciate you. All right. Let's uh, investigate real quick. Just for, you know what, and gigs, I'm just going to Google Chad Kelly. Swag. Let's see what we got. Uh, news. Let me see. He did try out for the Packers. I know that I remember that. That was three days ago. So I don't know, guys. Um, I'm going to go on Twitter. Okay. Let me try, I don't know, Adam Schefter maybe. That's kind of small potatoes for Schefter. But, yeah, I'm not seeing it. So if you see any anything verified, Zach, let me know. In the meantime, I want to turn your attention. We I see all the supers and the questions and comments we're going to get to is everything trust. But first, Zach, I want to, I think our uh, community wants to know what the very latest on the Aaron Rodgers front is. An article that is going viral right now at milehighhuddle.com lays out the very, very latest, and I'm going to do my best to elucidate this for all of you. Basically, here's what's what's going on. The last time we heard from Aaron Rodgers and the whole situation there, trade rumors, you know, discontent with the Packers, it was James Palmer of NFL Network reporting that the Broncos remain a legitimate landing spot for Rodgers and that George Payton, the GM, continues to monitor the situation. All right. Well, then we have the massive tent pole of the NFL schedule release and then kind of lost in the shuffle there was the wideout James Jones, former teammate in Green Bay, saying he thinks that this is a relationship between the Packers and Rodgers, Zach, that can be – that is fixable. And then his trusty old fullback, John Kuhn, everybody remembers John Kuhn, uh, also echoed that, Zach. And here's – I just want to read this quote. Uh, This is Kuhn talking to, I want to say it was NFL Network, yeah. Quote, I'm sure a contract is part of that as far as what what Rodgers is looking for. I'm sure that years guaranteed is a part of that, not just being the highest paid quarterback uh, at your position, but I believe the security going forward is a part of that. And I also believe being on the same page as having open communication 
where all sides feel like they are being heard. Aaron and I are friends. We spent a decade of our lives together in the same meeting rooms on the same practice field. So we do talk. And quite frankly, this is something that I believe is fixable. All right, Zach, close quote. Last thing, Ian Rappaport, NFL insider on the Pat McAfee show said, quote, Aaron, well, I'm not going to quote him. I'm going to paraphrase him. That Aaron Rodgers has basically one thing stuck in his craw, one kind of demand, one guarantee he's looking for from the Packers in order to make nice. He wants that mega deal, and it needs to be guaranteed money over years to make him feel like that Jordan Love pick from last year is not anything he really needs to worry about. It's a strong sign signal. Hey, you're our guy. Always have been. Always will be. To quote now what Rappaport said, quote, to me, it's not about the overall yearly averages. It's about, from what I understand, security and him knowing that he is the Packers starter going forward, guaranteed contractually. And then he went on to say he believes the Packers have made Rodgers a significant offer, Zach. How fragile is his ego? I mean, the guy's the future Hall of Famer. He's the reigning MVP. Love didn't take a single snap last year. So he was far and away and the understood starter, to quote Joe Flacco. I I mean, and he looks around on the opposite field in the NFC title game. He sees Tom Brady, a future, you know, the greatest quarterback of all time, arguably, guys. And Brady, for years, including last year, took less money to field a better team. So it's a, it's a really bad look, I believe, him coming off looking for more money and squeezing the Packers for more commitment. And his, it, it strikes me as someone with a lot of pride at stake and a really tiny ego that needs to be constantly assuaged, even though he gets all the credit and all the due in the world as a one of the best quarterbacks to ever live. Now, does he warrant that considering his playoff record? I saw a CBS tweet that came out yesterday since 2017. Rodgers has as many playoff wins as Blake Bortles. I'll leave it there. Well, listen, Aaron Rodgers lived through the being the other side of the equation, right? Um, through the looking glass, he was Jordan Love. He was that late in the first round flyer the Packers took back in 05, while a future Hall of Fame, former three-time NFL MVP still reigned on the roster in Brett Favre. So he knows how that kind of situation can actually unfold in a hurry. So I can understand in his case, uh, I mean, we've said on this show, he's not, he's a little bit weird, but still I can understand him seeing, looking around and going, look, I've seen this, this movie before. Uh, uh-uh. If you want me to play ball, if you want me showing up and dropping 48 touchdowns for you, leading you to double digit wins in 2021, Some assurances need to be made, and the only way to assure that in all reality for the NFL is guaranteed money. And, Zach, as it stands, Aaron Rodgers currently has the sixth highest APY contract in the league for a quarterback. This year, if you look at his cap number, he's set to count for $37.2 million against the Packers cap, and he is behind, of course, the guy atop the quarterback supremacy chart Pay-wise, Patrick Mahomes at $45 million APY. So there's some ground there for the Packers to cover in terms of, you know, like, like Kuhn said, he doesn't need to be the highest paid, but it needs to be a contract that, you know, guarantee-wise erases the possibility of being supplanted by a Jordan Love. So if you're the Packers, is it worth doing that? Well, I'm sorry, but if he thinks he's going to get Mahomes money, he's delusional. I mean, you invest in a 20-something quarterback for half a billion dollars, not a 38-year-old who's uh, seemingly wants to, has one foot out the door and is a guest hosting Jeopardy. And I'm looking at his career earnings, Chad, in the NFL. In 16 seasons, he's earned $240 million. That's not including endorsements. It's not including sponsorships. So all told, over 300 million bucks. And I think it's funny. He was griping and complaining and moaning about the Packers not getting him weapons. How about reducing your contract? How about taking less money and lowering your salary cap to help your team out? You can't have it both ways. You can't hamstrung your team and then complain about being hamstrung. It doesn't work that way. Uh, he's saying – our. From Hawaii. Now, this was something that Dale helped educate us on. I've never personally been to Hawaii. Been to a lot of places. Hawaii, not yet among them. But I hope that changes in the not too distant future. That obviously, and anyone who even knows anything remotely about 
United States geography, you're going no duh, but Hawaii's many, many islands, right? And there's, you know, I are even now talking about it. I can't keep them all straight, probably because I've never been there. But as uh, Kiaka says here, I'm from the Big Island. I'm from Big Island, but I'm on Oahu, so that's the same island Honolulu's on. Training for an upcoming fight. So he's not just MMA guy, like working out MMA style. Like this dude's a fighter. That's cool, man. If you have any clips of you fighting on YouTube, send them to us. He says, I'd love to guest on the show in the future for sure. Appreciate the invite. Love you guys. All right, for dude, sure. yeah, D- DM me, dude. We'll, we'll work it out. Yeah, appreciate you, Kiyaku. Um, all right. So with everything that's been said, uh, covering the most recent ground on the Aaron Rodgers front, Zach, I laid it out in this article, but what does it all mean for the Broncos? Does, has anything changed in the Aaron Rodgers landscape relative to Denver? It's about money. And I think that's what it was always about. It was never about so much, you know, them releasing Jordan, uh, Jake Cromelow, the receiver. It wasn't him wanting the GM fired. It's It all comes down to money in the end. It's what makes the world go around the NFL, anybody else, from billionaires to people who were dead broke. And that's what Rodgers wanted. He wanted his ego stroked. He wanted his bank account fatter. And he wants some security in his age 38 season that he's going to be around for how long? He thinks love is never going to play. He thinks he's going to be the quarterback and they're never going to replace him at all. They're going to just disband the franchise once he walks away. So it's all about money. I don't think anything changed there. And I think the more he makes it about money and the more he comes across so petty, it's going to actually turn off George Payton. That doesn't strike me as a Payton type quality. Kane, what's up, dude? Appreciate you. State of Bean guy right here. He says, what's up, my dudes from Amarillo, Texas. Very cool, man. And, of course, the appropriate Drew Locke emojis. We all know that trio. He says, uh, Kane, in another super, thank you, Kane. He says, meeting at the Jets game would be awesome to me. All right, dude, we're going to make it happen. It's probably going to be the Jets game, but we'll give you some for sures on that in the next few days. What's the Raiders game? Is that week five or six? Because there's the, the early season Raiders. I thought that's the other contender here. Well, that's later. And let me let me double check that. Let me see here real quick. I'll pull it back up. Otherwise, it's so, probably going to be the Jets game. Schedule the Raiders game in Denver is week uh, – where to go? Las, yeah, so it's week six. So that would be three weeks. It would actually be – yeah. So Jets week three, Raiders week six, October 17th. Hmm. I mean, it's still probably going to be decent weather, uh, but it's a lot less certain. You know, and if we want to be able to set this up in a way where we minimize the risk of inclement weather so that not only the meet and greet hanging out, but, you know, we'd want to do like some barbecuing, some some uh, tailgating, have a tent up, do our live show. Right. And if it's hailing and snowing and all this stuff, that's not conducive. Yeah. So it's looking like week three tentatively right now. I just wanted to uh, ask about that real quick. No worries. All right, John, let me uh, let me mosey through the chat here for a second and see what jumps out to me. I mean, look, here's the the skinny on – actually, here's one from Tyler. Let me grab Tyler real quick on, twi- on Twitter. What's up, Tyler? He says, what's up, gents? Sounds like Cortland Sutton is high on lock, even with Aaron Rodgers possibly coming to Denver. I don't know what Cortland said. I've been pretty consumed because right before we went live – I was getting up the uh, Aaron Rodgers article and then the Deshaun Hamilton being waived article. Do you know what he's talking about, fellas? I saw it on Twitter. I'm trying to pull it up right now. He did give an interview. I believe it was on, I think it was on KOA. I'm not totally sure, though. Yeah, he said it right here. I'll read the quote verbatim from Ryan Edwards. He said it on KOA about Drew Locke. He goes, quote, being able to see him this offseason, he's been – up here pretty much every day since the season ended. I I get to see him pretty much every day. I talk to the dude and his mind is on a different level when it comes to the game right now. He's thinking about things that sports analysts would say, you want to hear that from a veteran at quarterback or a guy who has won a Super Bowl. You can tell that he's understanding the game even more. I think a lot of people slept on the patience part of it. Thank you, Cortland. He's so close. I firmly believe he's needed the reps and needs the reps. Being able to go back and do self-evaluation, I think he understands what he needs to work on, and he's been working his butt off all offseason. 
He's excited for the opportunity, and I know we're all excited for him, end quote. Honestly, Zach, I think this is a pretty good window into the entire organizational thinking on Drew. I think their primary position is they're high on him being able to turn a corner this year, but because of his injuries and because of some of the lows last year, especially in the middle of the season, they're hedging just in case with Teddy. Yeah, but this is the same thing that we've been saying, and it's the same message that's been emanating from Dove Valley since the season ended last year, is that Locke really is in the facility working his ass off to get better every single day, and his teammates are picking up on that, and he knows what his shortcomings are, and he's attacking those. But he mentioned Sutton did the P word. And how hard is it now, if you don't want to hear it from us or George Payton or an analyst on Twitter, how about taking it from a top 10 wide receiver who's catching Locke's passes day in and week in and week out? It, you need patience. He needs the reps. And he still needs the reps. But to this point, behind the scenes, what we haven't seen yet, and hopefully what we will see in the weeks to come, is that Locke is improving. Chris on Facebook wants to know, are they going to let people go to camp this year as far as fans? We don't know yet. The good news on that front, all right, is that, you know, there's been some overtures with Major League Baseball. The Broncos, well before the draft, started letting media back in the building, still social distanced and all that stuff, but big steps in the right direction for angling towards having fans there, not only for training camp, Zach, but, you know, when it really matters in the games. Right now, there's no way to say for sure, but as things continue to unfold in the world, I mean, festivals, tours, concerts, things like that are being booked for summer and fall. So I think that bodes well, maybe not for camp. Maybe it'll be a little too early, but for the season, I think you're going to see dang close to full capacity, you know, might have things, something to do with the, the, the shot. I'm just going to say, all right, people (laughs) having the shot and the jab. I mean, I don't know. We'll see, but uh, I'm optimistic. I am as well, and there might be, like you said, training wheels in training camp. There might be social distancing or not a lot of big groups of people clumped together, But even though it's outdoors. But by the season, by the fall, I mean, when we're 18 months removed from that, I think the stadium should be at 100% or right there. So I'm excited about normalcy, and that goes hand-in-hand hand with what we're planning this season uh, with the meetup. Man, the generosity tonight from the community, it's like we have to pinch ourselves how lucky we are. And I'm telling you, this this kind of support is – it does keep the lights on in terms of this the live streams and the pods and the video content and our creative energies being focused on this. It really does keep us coming back to the table and allowing us yeah. to do that. So, Michaela, the Duchess of MHH, in the house with a very generous super chat. We love you. We appreciate you. And she says, happy late pot anniversary, Chad and Zen. Yeah, I'll have to go back and find what the actual pub date was on that episode. I'll find it while we're live. For Michaela, thank you so, so much. And that's why you're royalty. You're the Duchess. And we have the Queen, Christy, and we have the, you know, the Princess Poppy. But thank you, Michaela. Real quick, Chad, I thought, I might be wrong. I thought we are, we started around free agency in 2018. It was the draft. Mm-hmm. It was, it was, it was, uh, yeah, um, it was, and the reason I know this is because the first one we did was within a couple of days of the roundtable pod for the mock draft. I remember that. I just I thought we started uh, in March, but so still. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try and find it while we're here live tonight. And if I can't, then you know we'll we'll circle back at another time. But I'm relatively certain. And here's another one from Michaela. Thank you. Just thank you. Seriously, thank wow. you so much. She says, just wanted to say how much all of the people in this pod mean to me. MHH is Hall of Fame of pods. That's awesome. And one of the most um, gratifying components to this whole thing we do every single night is not only us being um, you know, edified by the relationships we build with our community and the individuals in the community like you, Michaela, but seeing you guys forming relationships with each other and friendships that sprout and grow beyond the live chat. And, you know, it's just cool to be a part of that. It's funny you say that because I'm noticing in Michaela's picture, she's wearing a shirt designed by Christy, another yep. superstar, you know. Uh, so I love the the intersection of the community here and, and the friendships and the bonds that are forming. But, Michaela, you are in the Hall of Fame of the Huddle Up Pod viewership. So we appreciate you more than you know. Most definitely. And I'm doing an infinite scroll here because we are a daily show. And so I'm going trying to go back all the way to 2018. I'll get there here in a second. 
Um, but thank you, Michaela. Much love to you. All right, John, the stream has jumped. All right, we're at 30, we're at 40 minutes. Let's grab uh, Travis real quick on Facebook, who also sent some stars, as he is wont to do. Thank you, Travis. Thank you, Travis. He says, honestly, we shouldn't worry about Rodgers unless it actually happens. Would I like to have him? Sure. But until it happens, change the page. Just saying. Yeah, I mean, we feel you. Like, honestly, that's why – and there's a big segment of Broncos fans right now, Zach, who are like – their whole outlook on the team is just hanging by a thread on does Rodgers land here or not. If it's not, then, you know, uh, it's it's like um, – Nothing matters. It's right. going to be another crap show, very nihilistic, uh, et cetera. But we're on the opposite end of that spectrum, whether it's Rodgers, Locke, Bridgewater, whoever. We think this is a team on the rise. And we happen to believe that the, the guy that's going to be leading that charge, more likely than not, Drew Locke. Yeah, you know, it would be great if the Broncos could somehow land a future Hall of Famer by the name of Aaron Rock. I mean, who wouldn't want to see that in Denver with this offense? But I hate to break this news to you, but if they don't get him, the season will go on with whoever they have at quarterback. And we happen to think, based on the talent level and the roster constructed by Elway and George Payton, they will compete this year, not should, will compete for a playoff spot. So we have a lot of things we're looking forward to. And I understand the fatigue when it comes to the quarterback talk, it's also really good for business, Chad. You know, I'm not, we have to just be honest there. So I can't yeah. hate on it too much. Yeah, it's fun. And it's like we say, as far as the offseason goes, one of the things we love the most, and why for me anyway, the offseason is my favorite section on the NFL calendar, is part of the speculation. It's fun. You know, you get into the weeds and whether it happens or not, it's just fun to talk about the possibilities. You know, it's like the title of Nick and Carl's show, Building the Broncos. It's about the process of how we get there and enjoying the process, not so much, you know, obsessing over the end result. And so, you know, it's a rumor. Rumors are flying right now. There's reputable sources that are providing context on this whole Aaron Rodgers situation. And when we get those reputable sources, we pass them on. But this too shall uh, pass. Enjoy the journey, guys. Don't worry about the destination. Let's just all enjoy the ride and see where it takes us. All right, John, I don't know if it's possible. There's quite a few early on. Um, let's see. There was one from Mark. I'm going to read it. It says, what's up, my guys? What's y'all pred- prediction on the Broncos this year? That means everything in general. Hashtag huddle up pod. Hashtag football priest. MHH, Chad and Zach, before he just went um, to the next level on his supers, Zach. So yeah. last night, Mark hasn't been able to catch every single pod this week. He's got a lot going on. So, Mark, we talked about it last night, but let me let me rewind the tape just for a minute. We're predicting, based on the schedule, to ranked twenty sixth or excuse me, twenty fourth strength of schedule is the Denver Broncos. I'm seeing double digits. All right, um, we went through kind of a game by game last night, way too early prediction. We're going to do it again at the end of the the summer after training camp and preseason. But Zach, has anything changed in your mind? I still see like a 10 or 11 win type of season for this team based on the matchups. Now, parity can ch- change things. There can be worse to first. Some of those opponents that look soft and easy today might not be so when that time comes around. But I'm looking at 10, 11 wins as a feasible, realistic possibility. Yeah, nah, nothing's changed in 24 hours. I'm still holding firm to the Broncos, competing with whoever they have under center, whether it's A-Rod or Locke or Teddy B. So I think, looking at the Broncos' schedule, there's some difficult pockets in it, Mark. I mean, they have three divisional games at the end. They have three NFC East games in a row in the middle of the year. They have a Week 11 bye. It's not going to be super easy, but it's a lot easier than last year and the year prior. So I think a 10, one more time, 10-7 and seven or 11-6. and six for Denver this season. J-Lo, what's up, dude? Thanks for the super sticker. He says, get up. Appreciate that, brother. Really do. It's good to have you in the chat. Really good. And I'm trying to remember if we're connected on Twitter. If we are, if we are, do one of these in the mentions. And if we're not, remedy that quick, my friend. He has such a big nose and such small ears. Yeah, our hippo, you know, get up. All right, John, if you can find these, good. If not, I'm going to grab them because they've been waiting. Chris, on Super Chat. Love you, buddy. Thank you. Connect on Twitter. He says, Chad Jensen, Zach Kelberman, still the best in the biz. Thanks, Out man. of the five signings, who do you think will have a breakout year? Well, let's see. So we've got Kyle Fuller, Ronald ding, ding, Darby. Ding. Um, 
who am I missing? I'm, I'm not oh. talking about re re signing. So um, Shamar Steven. Boom. Um, and then these tackles. So I'm going to say, as far as a breakout from the guys signed, you know, it's hard to say a guy that's been an all pro before, like Kyle Fuller breakout, you know? So if there's going to be a guy that's an under the radar signing that ends up paying some dividends, you know, maybe, uh, maybe a Bobby Massey, maybe someone like that, maybe Ronald Darby, Ronald Darby used to be Zach. One of the most, there was a time there about a 18 month stretch. He was one of the most intriguing young corners in the game. And then he kind of took some steps back and it wasn't quite so coveted and valued. So I could see him maybe turning the corner too. What's the measure for a breakout year from a, a tackle though? I mean, how, how do you even quantify that pro bowl? Uh, no sacks allowed, least amount of pressures. I believe Bobby Massey will hold firm at right tackle, assuming he stays healthy, but he doesn't jump off the charts to you as a guy who's going to make impact plays every single game. I think Kyle Fuller, though, I know it's the easy way out, but you're talking about a former all-pro type talent in this secondary. I think he's going to be the beneficiary of the Broncos forcing more turnovers this year. I can see Fuller going back to the Pro Bowl with four or five picks in a Fangio defense this season. John Juno, what's up, buddy? Good to have you with us. He says, I'm a huge Tar Heel fan. Watched every game. He's going to be, he's talking about Javante Williams, going to be the best running back since Terrell Davis. Hey, Zach, I love the the, the confidence. Broncos have had some success drafting running backs in the second round that have gone on to do some pretty good things. Third round, not so much. Um, I'm trying to think. Bobby Humphrey, I think, is the last running back they drafted in round one, unless I missed my mark. But still. I'm high on him. We'll see. I feel like we've heard this before, especially from the guy who used to wear TD's number in Philip Lindsay. So I, you know, I'll hold my. I'm still very confident in Javante Williams, Pookie as he goes, Chad. But uh, I think it's going to take a little while before he cracks the rarefied air, joining TD in Broncos lore. Indeed. All right, we've got one, another one from our resident male model that rocks our swag, makes it look good. Muhammad again. Love you too, bro. You. Love you too. Trust on that. Great to have you back. Now, things are right now. It's like right as rain. When Muhammad's with us, it's like all is normal. Normalcy has returned. Yeah, our podcast is feng shuied out now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right, here's one from Shane Daniels. Great to have you with us, Shane. A guy who's increasingly becoming a superstar. Love you, buddy. It says, Peyton, signing another right tackle. I like the competition he's building. Hashtag let them hate. Hashtag go Broncos. Yeah, dude, that's one thing that uh, a big takeaway here is, you know, like in years past, if this happens, you know, John Elway goes out, pays decent money to sign a guy and then maybe kicks the bushes, finds a guy down the road. We're good. Him and Matt Russell, that was kind of their M.O. Peyton's like, look, I'm not going to be up at night agonizing over this. I'm going to, you know, darts at the dartboard. It's his philosophy, right? The more darts you have to throw the higher your chances are of hitting the bullseye. You know what just occurred to me? How much competition is coming to Broncos training camp this summer? Look around the roster. Quarterback, uh, running back, receiver, uh, right tackle, inside linebacker, safety, cornerback. I mean, there's jobs available at every spot here, and that's all by design because George Payton had a vision for this Denver team. Nothing given Everything earned. It's the way to go. And that's why Peyton Chad, I'll say it for the umpteenth time, was a home run hire by Denver. Joshua Shadow, a great superstar, a Facebook super supporter as well. Love you, Josh. Appreciate you, man. He says, I'm drop the hate for this. I'm drop the hate for this QB room. I believe we're going to get at least better than Brock Osweiler QB play, no matter the man. Brock deserves a lot of credit for 2015. So if we can get that, with this defense, we on to something, unless Aaron Rodgers, of course, uh, arrives, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, dude, Brock does deserve his, his uh, you know, just desserts for his contributions to Bronco Cannon. I'm always going to wonder how Brock Osweiler's career might have been different if he doesn't defect and go sign in Houston and just stays where he should have, takes over that team, because the Broncos ended up going 9-7 and seven in 2016, with Trevor Simeon winning eight of those games, Paxton Lynch winning another, if it's Brock Osweiler, I mean, it's basically the same team he captained for seven weeks while Peyton licked his wounds on that foot injury. You're probably looking at at least one more win if it's Brock and you're in the playoffs. And then, I mean, this is how legends are born. I mean, legends 
possible legends in the league hang by a rate by a freaking razor margin, man. And that's why sometimes those decisions that you don't necessarily see as being, you know, career changing, franchise changing. I mean, through retrospect, Zach, it looks like Brock Osweiler was a categorical bust. And he probably would have been a bust if he would have stayed as the guy and didn't defect. But you don't know that. Something tells me that would have been a little bit different story. Maybe not a greatly different story, but a little bit different if he just takes the money from Elway, stays home. Yeah, I mean, what could have been? There's a billion different Broncos stories when it comes to that. Uh, In terms of the quarterback this year, Chad and I are firmly in belief that the Broncos just have to not screw it up at quarterback. They have to have competency there and just even above average play to good play at quarterback to be a playoff team. I'm not saying they have to settle for that. I'm not saying you don't go after A-Rod if he becomes available, but this team is loaded. I just mentioned the, the talent they have, and all they need is just a quarterback to not screw things up. I am Supreme, <clears throat> 22 jumping in. Broncos signed Cam Fleming for $3.67 million. Thoughts? Man, I didn't expect him to make that much, to be honest with you. I didn't think he'd get that much. But then again, you know, he's coming off a season with some bad advanced analytics, but he's a very experienced right tackle. And, you know, it's a different story when your offensive line coach is Mike Munchak. When it's Mike Munchak, you kind of got to trust the signings a little bit more in that, hey, the Broncos are, are wise to what they're getting. So if Munchak thinks he can make some lemonade here, Zach, maybe we should trust him until proven otherwise. I think it's pretty interesting, though. I mean, uh, Massey only got $4 million bucks, so they're about making the same amount of money. So it, it foreshadows a competition, may the best man win, but it's still, them combined, cheaper than Juwan James. So that's uh, one of the worst contracts I think we'll ever see from the Broncos. Calvin, what's up, dude? Great to see you, my friend. By the way, our exchange on Twitter uh, over Mother's Day weekend – you know, it really uh, touched me, really moved me. You telling me what happened with – we're two guys, you and I, that unfortunately don't still have our mothers with us in this world. So just want you to know, heart, prayers, thoughts up to you. Very tough situation, my friend, but appreciate you. He says, what's up, Broncos country? I love the Bobby Massey signing. Can't wait till the Cowgirls game will be uh, will be there, hopefully. I see the slowest bootleg again uh, in 2013, yeah. That, that that was an iconic play for as comedic as it was. It remains iconic because he fooled the defense. He fooled the stadium. He fooled the camera guy, fooled the color guys. That was a, a, a unique play. Legend has it. Peyton still rolling out to this date to, to the side. I mean, that's one of the slowest developing plays you'll see at any level. But that what a game. Instant classic. Still like watching that game. Very fun. Eric Miller, what's up, dude? Thank you for the super chat. Connect with us on Twitter. Welcome to the manger. That's the best way to uh, – oh, and he's got, a, he's got a comment here too. I love watching the development of rookies and second-year players. Remember when Justin Simmons hopped the center in New Orleans and the Broncos won that game? Yeah. He blocked the, the extra point, right, Zach? And then yeah. Will Parks it, scooped it was a walk-off two-pointer, yeah. Two-pointer, game over. That was a, a sweet little play. Um, Andy, wow, thanks, dude. Wow. Seriously. Everyone's generosity tonight is just – Stunning. I mean, I, I don't want it to start sounding cliche, but it just you're blowing us away, guys. And he says, I got to keep the hype train moving. Wish I could make it back to Colorado for the meetup, but I'll be there in spirit. Cheers from Oklahoma. Hashtag Denver Broncos for life. Well, who knows, man? A lot can change between now and then, Andy. And maybe if the stars align and the football gods, you know, uh, pour us out a blessing, you might be able to get there. Regardless, though, Andy, thank you so much for your support and for you tuning in tonight. We appreciate you. Any question you have, let us know. We'll be happy to take it tonight. Um, John, we need Doug idolized. Uh, Seth, did we get Seth Harmon? We need Seth Harmon. Uh, we need – and then we're current, actually, for a minute with where I'm at. And I'm sure there have been other ones that have come in, but we'll take it as it, as it comes. Doug, what's up, dude? Love you, buddy. Rocking the let him hate still in his YouTube profile pic. He says, what up, priest and beast? It's a shame we couldn't get any um, trade probably for Deshaun, but guess now he – value. Okay, value for Deshaun. But guess now he can go drop passes <laughs> elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be too hard on Deshaun. The problem – it's not like he had some – it wasn't Jerry Judy caliber crippling, you know, totally caught the injury or the uh, dropsy bug. 
it was just that in his case, when his drops happened, man, they were crunch time, kind of high profile drops. You know, the most obvious one being that one that could have helped the Broncos come back and win that season opener with Joe Flacco, the same game Jawan James, ironically, suffered that injury that altered the course of his future career endeavor. I mean, I'll be a little harder on him. That's his job is to catch passes, and that was one of his strengths coming out of college What were his hands. So, I mean, he really failed in that department, and he kind of ruined what chemistry there was under center by dropping passes and inopportune times. I just feel like if Judy's going to get that uh, criticism as a rookie, why not Deshaun as a third-year pro? I mean, he really wasn't an impressive receiver. He was way more of a jag than a guy worth investing in. Claude, hey, shout out to our star senders over on Facebook, like Claude, Gary, what's up, Gary, Jeremy, Brad, Travis, of course, love each and every one of you, appreciate you guys. Um, All right, we got Seth Harmon here, we're at 55 minutes, we got a little time, but we are starting to run out. What's up, Seth? Right back at you, dude, thumbs up to you, Uh, you are a superstar, and if you ever want to come on the show, Seth, I mean, you reach out, because you have been consistent for a long, long time, so... Um, here's a newer name, Zach. Idolized. Very generous debut super chat. Thank you. Um, make sure you connect on Twitter. Been lurking for two years now and finally decided to tune in. Cheers to Zach. Went from anti you to my favorite podcaster out there. Cheers from Northern Cali. Love that. So he went from like, man, screw Zach Kellerman to being like, Zach's the man. We love hearing that, man. Per, you know, persuasion, long suffering. These are key traits of any football priest. It's so weird, though, because it's usually in reverse. I go from being everyone's favorite to people hating me, so I realized I definitely appreciate you, man. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you around these parts even more. Christian, what's up, dude? Appreciate you, buddy. He says, the Fleming signing is a loss. Hamilton released is a win. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not as negative on Fleming. I mean, again, guys, I trust Munchak, like where has Munchak so far? This is year three with Munchak. So we got two full seasons. Where has he led us astray up to this point? Eli? Mm, Maybe, but we don't know exactly who was pulling that string. I'm inclined to agree with you that that was probably, he was the testimonial saying, no, let's play Eli. But look, uh, DeMar Dotson came in, played aces for Denver, at right tackle in a pinch, right? On the doorstep of the season. You saw Garrett Bowles turn the corner into becoming an all-pro. You could argue that Dalton Reisner had a great start and then under Munchak in year one, and then in year two kind of regressed a little. Didn't love what you saw from Lloyd overall as a rookie, Lloyd Cushenberry, the center, but he did start all 16 games. It was reliable, at least in that sense. Graham Glasgow, a little up and down, hard to get a beat on his initial performance because injury bug and then, of course, getting the bug, getting the actual virus. But overall, I think this Broncos offensive line, even with the troubles at right tackle, has been significantly improved with Mike Munchak. And he's still just kind of getting started here, Zach. Yeah, I agree. And I don't think Deshaun is a W. I think that's a tie because the Broncos are losing by, you know, giving up on an investment and he still could be something in the NFL. And I'll say this about Fleming. It's a W if he's a backup. It's an L if he's the starter. I, I, I promise you guys, watching him in Dallas a couple of years ago, you do not want him starting games for Denver this season, regardless of who's a quarterback. By the way, um, as we grab this from Brandon, a.k.a. Bama Broncos, thank you, Brandon. He says, if we get Rodgers, we will not have any more money to pay any of our good players, question um, mark. Depends on how you structure it. I mean – Salary cap is voodoo, man. It's fudgeable. You can massage it. You know, it's it's robbing Peter to pay Paul, kicking future li- kicking current liabilities into the future. There's so many ways around it, but it would definitely be a pickle. It's some, it would have to be something that George Payton and uh, I just had a brain fart. Who's the new cap guy? The wizard uh, Hurtado, Rich Hurtado would have to crack. Yeah, I mean, if you if you don't think the salary cap's a myth, look at what Kansas City did last. Not just paying Mahomes and paying Chris Jones and paying Kelsey. Then this offseason, Chad, they acquire, they sign Joe Thune, they acquire Orlando Brown, they lure Kyle Long out of retirement. The salary cap is a myth. And if they acquire Rodgers, they have the money right now to take his contract on. And assuredly, they'd be able to pay the players they want to pay. You make things happen when you want to make things happen. 
Truer words have not been spoken on this podcast. Dale, what's up, brother? Looking forward to having you on the show in the near future. It's going to be a gas in June, I believe, is when we booked that. Appreciate you, dog. He says, just dropping some support. Can't stay, but will be watching later. Best Broncos podcast. Thanks, John, Chad, and Zach. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Seriously. Appreciate you, brother. Um, looking forward to meeting you. Here is BG. This is a Mount Rushmore superstar. This is one of the, similar to Zeus McPeak, this is one of the founding fathers, patron saints of what how this community really was able to get off the ground when we started doing these as live streams on YouTube. So shout out to BG. What up, dude? He says, I'm not so hung up on what our record will be as much as I want us to play good against top teams. Amen, dude. That's a big part of it. I'm halfway there. I'm half what you said and half about we need the record, right? If you want to go into the playoffs, you need the record. But, Zach, that's one of the reasons why the Broncos' 29-year streak of appearing on Monday Night Football came to a close. They have been, you know, both bad as a team for five years and not interesting, boring. Um, what I don't know. Just And then in the big games, when they have been on the national stage, Zach, they're always – yawners or just they get blown out. So the NFL is like, yeah. look, until proven otherwise, we're pulling you out of the rotation. Yeah, and that's why I said yesterday, people were very, very upset about the Broncos not having any primetime except for one Thursday nighter. But what do you expect? I mean, this team hasn't been relevant. They haven't been successful. They're not exciting. And you have to check one of those three boxes in order to get primetime games. But I, I, I agree with Brian's premise here. I want the Broncos to set the bar a little higher to not only vanquish the weaker teams like the Bengals, the Lions, whatever, but to go toe-to-toe with Kansas City, Baltimore, and the like. All right, we got two or three more. And, John, it looks like I've got them here in the stream. And then we got a dip, all right, for tonight. Thanks to everybody, including Dennis. Love you, buddy. My question is, why is Green Bay bringing the quarterbacks, bringing in quarterbacks, Blake Bortles signs with them, uh, Chad Kelly, unless they think Aaron Rodgers won't be there? It just makes me wonder. Appreciate you guys. Hashtag state of being, hashtag Denver Broncos for life. Well, you'll have to provide that intelligence for us, Dennis, because you're closer geographically to uh, cheesehead land than any of us on this show. So anything you pick up, keep your ear low to the floor. You hear things, let us know. But, yeah, it is conspicuous, Zach. We don't, our official position on this show is we're not big believers in coincidence. All right. So it doesn't necessarily correlate as a guarantee. But I mean, if you're Brian Gutekunz, the GM there, don't you think you would be a little unwise to not hedge just in case? I mean, might affect things with Aaron, but I doubt it. These are low level signings. That's all it is. And I researched this when I wrote about Blake Bortles signing with the Packers. The Packers have one quarterback not named Rodgers under contract for this season, and that's Jordan Love. So they have a rookie minicamp coming up this weekend. Uh, OTAs are starting for them on the 24th. They need bodies in camp. I, I wouldn't read too much into this. Even Gutekunst said before the draft they're probably going to sign a quarterback, bring one in. He's a camp body. So don't read into it too much. They don't really have anyone. That's what it comes down to. Yes, by the way, uh, we got a few hundred on YouTube with us still live. We got uh, close to that between Facebook, Twitter. Hey, guys, even if you're only with us for 30 seconds, maybe you got things going on, be sure to hit that like button before you dip on out, okay? Brandon, again, thank you, buddy. Bama Broncos, you can't get all your players each draft. Next year, we'll go after a quarterback, right tackle next year? Um, We'll see. It's all contingent on Drew. Does Drew turn the corner? If he does, that's a moot point, and yet probably a tackle is on the table for first round. If he doesn't, Fangio's gone, probably. I mean, there's a chance Teddy could step in and keep this team competitive, but and Fangio saves his job, and Drew goes. But if he doesn't succeed, yeah, the Broncos will draft a quarterback high next year if Drew fails to launch. And, and regardless, if the Broncos go 17-0 and or 0-17, they have to invest in a right tackle. They can't wait any longer. James isn't coming back. His career is in jeopardy. Massey's not the long-term answer, uh, and neither is Cam Fleming. So regardless, they have to finally, in year two, under Peyton next year, uh, invest in that right tackle. They cannot keep waiting on it. Yep, Calvin, appreciate the super, my friend. Yep, we covered that. Cameron Fleming signed. Broncos have now signed three tackles in the last calendar week to replace Jawan James plus an undrafted rookie. Uh, Giovanni, Keep up the good work, he says on YouTube. I hear you guys every morning uh, to hear my Bronco updates. I hope you guys' channel keeps growing. Positive vibes. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Serious. Thank you. All right, let me see that. 
let me see, John. Let me see where we're at. Tom, north of the 49th parallel, proving Broncos country is not a geographic location. It's a state of being. Tom, love you, bud. He says, do we really need Aaron Rodgers, guys, to flip this organization upside down? Thank you. Um, do you need him to do it? No. I Seriously, I think this team is on the rise, and I think Drew's going to be a part of that. But it depends on your perspective, all right? That's that's how I see it. Now, Rodgers would catapult you closer faster, but the downside is you got a finite window with him because he's entering Zach his age 38 season. And also his trophy case isn't exactly stocked. So there's no, again, as great as a quarterback as he's been and will be for a couple more years, there is no guarantee he'd deliver the Broncos a title. And in terms of whether they need Aaron, just ask George Payton. He literally told you before the draft, you don't have to have a top 10 guy. You don't have to have a franchise guy. Necessarily, you can win without him. I thought that answer was very, very telling. I think it's Rello takeover, and then we got to go. All right. And Randy Jones, we see that, that, those stars. Thank you, buddy. And uh, Rello Takeover. I wish you had a Twitter account, dude. I always look for you every time you super chat to shout you out and tag you on Twitter, but there's no Rello Takeover. So if you create a Twitter account, connect. Let's keep the combo going there. W Show. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, my friend. But Zach, that's got to do it for tonight's episode of, oh, no, one more, one more. BG. Top rope at the 11th hour. Appreciate you. Was tonight a super chat record? If not, what was the record night? You were the record night, dude. You and Dale are the co-owners of the biggest single individual. Well, it's it's you start getting into the weeds defining this because Mark tonight, if it was one super, he would own that record alongside you and Dale. $400. But Mark's came in four individual donations tonight <clears throat> plus a five dollar one so he's like 405 he'd actually have the record he, i mean i would say mark has the record honestly i would say mark has the record for individual show super but uh bg you and dale are are there and then of course tonight from casey um there's a yeah. few a small handful of superstars in the in that rarefied air 200 club 300 club i mean we could count them on two hands the total so Yeah, buddy. Appreciate you. And there's Mark. Have a good night, Broncos country. It was a historical night. Thank you all for your support. And make sure you hit the like buttons. Click those thumbs up. Yes. Amen, bro. Prayers up to you. I know what's going on. So uh, any support you need from us, let us know, buddy. We're here to help. So other than that, Zach, let's dip out. I'm going to go try and catch a softball game, half of it anyway, for my my little uh, soon-to-be 11-year-old daughter. And we'll see you on Sunday. For Kelberman's Corner at noon, provided, gang, provided you are a supporter on Facebook. So, Zach, sign us off, and I'll put that up here. Here's how you become a supporter right here. Yeah, I strongly encourage all of you guys to uh, check out Kelberman's Corner every Sunday at noon. Uh, I think it's a different kind of flavor. Like Chad always says, it's me and Kim Becker kind of giving hot takes that hold water about the Broncos As always, we were off last week, but I'll keep you guys in suspense as to the show. I promise you, click the big blue button when you go to facebook.com slash mylihuddlepod. Become a subscriber. I promise you it's worth it. Otherwise, Chad, uh, be sure to follow the the mothership account at mylihuddle. Follow the podcast account at huddleuppod. Follow my partner on the left side of your screen at Chad and Jensen. You can follow me on Twitter, as you can see, at KelbermanNFL. If you so want to, and I'm so sorry, John, and of course, Sean KMHH, our wonderful producer, be sure to follow him. If you guys think about it, want to, have any interest in it, please check out our store at huddleuppod.com. Get yourself some product. Like you see Chad's wearing the hat. I'm wearing the hat. I have the coffee mug. Football pre-shirt, let him hate shirt. I promise you guys, we had some orders today, Chad, for a hoodie and a dad hat. I promise you, it's very well-made products. I wear them all the time. Chad does as well. But if you can't do that, there's three things you can do that mean the world to us. Subscribe, like, and share on YouTube. It helps us grow, helps us do more, helps us reach more people, and we appreciate every single click of those little thumbs up. But with that being said, Chad... We are off for tomorrow. We are off for Saturday. We'll be back in the saddle on Sunday evening, 6 o'clock Mountain Time, 8 o'clock Eastern. Uh, Kim Becker and I again at noon Mountain on Sunday for Kelberman's Corner. Great episode coming up, Chad. I hope you have a great weekend. You too, buddy. John has a great weekend. Everyone out there, thank you so much. We'll see you Sunday night. Take care, and as always, go Broncos. 
You've been listening to the Huddle Up Podcast. Join Broncos Country's deep divers at milehighhuddle.com to keep the conversation going.